Joining me now, our NBC News senior White House correspondent, Kelly O'Donnell, Washington Post columnist and former Democratic Congresswoman Donna Edwards, and Michael Waldman, president of the Brennan Center for Justice and author of Supermajority, How the Supreme Court Divided America. Kelly, the president is facing a very short timeline since the paused federal student loan payments. They come due in October. He's acknowledged that his substitute is going to take longer than hoped for. It may not cover as many people. Well, almost certainly, it's going to face similar legal challenges, right? I would expect there would be new legal challenges. And if people wonder, how does the president try this again if the Supreme Court said no under the first proposal, the reasoning is they have selected a new uh, area of law, the Higher Education Act, to ground this authority. Previously, it had been related to COVID and the national emergency, which would have allowed the president the Biden administration thought the authority, given that COVID emergency, to change uh, the rules of returning people to their payments of uh, student loans. Now they're going to have this new pathway, and that's why there's the public uh, hearing that the secretary talked about. And it is a more traditional way of creating a new rule, new regulation under the law. And so we don't yet know how many people it will affect. We don't know how much debt would be permitted to be forgiven under this process. It's going to take time. And whatever that is, expect some state or group uh, or individual to try to find standing to challenge it again in the courts. Uh, they do fully expect that repayment will begin, that they can't move fast enough uh, to put uh, this forgiveness in over the next few days. As you mentioned, uh, the time for repayment is required. Uh, that was also in uh, the case that uh, was uh, turned away by the Supreme Court that they must begin the repayment. So what the administration is doing is two things to try to ease that process. They're creating a 12-month, what they're calling an on-ramp, so as borrowers begin to repay what they have owed. If they miss a payment, the Department of Education will not report them to credit agencies so that they won't have penalties or harm to their credit score uh, by virtue of having to get back into the business of repayment. And the other thing is they have lowered the cap on how much discretionary income can be used toward this debt. And so that will ease the burden for some people. Just 5% instead of 10% of disposable income will now be the, the max for uh, repaying that, that student loan. Uh, but the bills are going to come due after three years where people didn't have to pay and they've been accustomed to not having to do that month by month. Andrea? And it's a big political issue, of course, and Michael, legally, there are a lot of challenges. Uh, this was a decision that basically decided against executive authority, presidential authority, between the branches, among the branches. So how can the president now persist and do this through another route? Well, that is the risk for President Biden and for the effort to uh, help these students with their debt. The court last year and this year has reinforced a brand new doctrine where they've said that a government agency cannot act, even if Congress has passed a law that gives it effectively the authority to do it, if it's a, quote, major question, and this is a big one. Uh, it, it is part of a very long-term drive that's clearly going to be happening, not just this year, but going forward, to curb the power of regulatory agencies and government agencies in the economy. Uh, so they have a stronger standing because it's uh, going through a different procedure, the administrative procedures of the government. But sooner or later, it's going to land in the laps of these very conservative justices who just feel empowered to say what kind of regulation they do and don't like. It would seem that the bet is that it won't get to the high court until after the November election in 2024, uh, maybe oral argument, but not decision making. So it would be at least some relief. And of course, it's a big political factor for the youth vote. And, but we should point out that a lot of older people carry decades and decades of student loan, people well established in their careers. Um, Donna, another decision from the Supreme Court last week gutted affirmative action in college admissions. I want to play what former Attorney General Eric Holder had to say about the decision this weekend. This nation continues to grapple with issues of race. Um, and to say that race is not uh, a, a negative factor for too many people in this nation is inconsistent with just what the facts are. Affirmative action doesn't mean you get into a school simply because you're black. It means that you're qualified and that one of the factors that's taken into consideration of a qualified student uh, is that person's race. 
And that was on Face the Nation. Donna, um, California and Michigan, in fact, both banned affirmative action California back in 1996, and UC Davis, part of the California system, has been using an adversity score to rank socioeconomic disadvantages for incoming medical students that might comply with the footnote by Justice Roberts saying that there are other means. Maybe it wasn't a footnote, maybe it was a, a final paragraph. Uh, President Biden has called these scores the new standard for achieving adversity. But it doesn't seem to me that that's really a substitute for all of the dimensions of affirmative action. Well, I think it's not. And I think that uh, systems that are now trying to use these um, uh, adversity kind of measures, socioeconomic factors, are actually finding it still very challenging uh, to diversify the racial uh, construct of their colleges and universities. And look, diversity is a two way street, it's not just about uh, the ability of black and Latino students to uh, be admitted and to achieve um, uh, status in, in, in college with a college education, but it's also about how the majority has to live in a more diverse world. I mean, it, it really is a good thing for colleges and universities to be diverse. And unfortunately, the Supreme Court has decided that uh, on a number of areas that it is going to effectively roll back the entirety uh, of the last half of the uh, 20th century with these latest rulings. And I think it's a gut punch to higher education to try to figure out uh, different ways to achieve the kind of diverse campuses that are good for all students.